curse whatever this thing is going on in the world in the name of Jesus. And uh, I uh, really appreciate Brother Bruce leading that song. Uh, I know God wants us to have wisdom, and if we lack it, we're supposed to ask him for it, and he would give it to us. And um, But uh, it, it's good to see you, and it's good to be here. And um, let's just pray. It's time to pray. Father, we bless you. We love you. God, you are, even as it's already been declared, you're so good and you're so kind and you're so powerful and merciful. And God, we just pray for our shut-ins today. And Lord, we pray for Sister Diane today. And God, we pray for those who were hindered from being here this morning. And God, we ask that, Lord, your hand of power, that virtue would leave this house and God, that you would go uh, to every one of those lives, Lord, who desire to be here, uh, but who were hindered. And those that need a physical touch, Lord, we just pray that your healing power, that unction that only you can provide, will flow in hearts and lives and bodies today. God, encourage every heart. Father, we pray for our community, our communities. We pray for our nation. We pray for our world. And God, we're asking, and Lord, that you supernaturally intervene in this hour of crisis. And Father, while I don't understand everything that's going on, God, you've never been caught off guard. You're never surprised. Lord, you are our shelter in the midst of the storm, and you're mighty to deliver. And God, we know that every moment, every day, every hour, you are with us. We're standing on the word of God. We're trusting you. We pray your divine hand of protection. Father, for those who uh, are ill, we ask God that you would raise them up. We pray for the peace of Israel. We pray for wisdom in America. God, I ask you to bless the lighthouse. I ask you to bless our sister churches. Touch every pastor in this city. Touch every congregation who's preaching the name of Jesus Christ. Touch them. God, give them encouragement and bless them. And God, we give you all the praise. And the church said, Amen. Amen. I'll tell you what I need to do tonight because Diane, uh, her arm is straight out in front of her. Of course, she's left-handed and it is her left arm. Her shoulder, that implant replacement, it's, it's just a very weak situation. She's very dependent. So what I'm going to ask of you tonight, let's just pray at home. Uh, then on Wednesday night, uh, I would ask us to do the same uh, that will allow me this week just to be a little closer to her. And uh, now, here's probably where we're at. Uh, as for me, I desire to come and unlock our door. I don't want any of you to feel overly constrained to be here. Uh, but if those of you that are here, we are certainly under the 50 number. Uh, if you would like to be here, uh, I will have this door uh, open next Sunday and and we'll just come back out here and praise God for those that show up. If you opt not to do that, uh, we could shut the services down. Uh, if, if we were to fulfill uh, the president's request, they've requested people uh, not to meet together for some 15 days. I believe we're in the ninth day. But what that would do, that would make us fall just beyond next Sunday, then that would mean we couldn't be back here until Wednesday, April the 1st, and then we would return on a Sunday, April the 5th, uh, for Palm Sunday. Uh, that would get us back a week before Easter. And so if you have some pleasure with that, uh, you can let somebody else maybe know uh, here in, in the service and let me know and we can make some decision about that. 
I knew we were going to take a hit today. We've heard from some of our folks, some we didn't, that I still anticipated that, that we would take some, some downturn. And, and I understand that again, just absolutely with no condemnation. Um, but uh, anyway, that, that's just kind of where it is. So if you want to uh, communicate some of that before you leave, then we can just work uh, accordingly. One thing I do know, they haven't shut the grocery stores down. It is absolutely <laughs> chaos. Uh, they are literally destroying uh, the, the gondolas where they put the food, where the milk and the toiletries and, and uh, the meat and just everything. And uh, I have been there as I've needed to be, and I have not found a six-foot rule working there. Uh, it is just absolutely chaos. That's what I've experienced. I don't know about you. And so, unless they absolutely shut that down and get that more controlled, I, I really don't know how we'll, we'll protect ourselves anyway. But uh, again, I'm not, I, I am not here to be rebellious, not at all. And uh, I, will, I will tell you, uh, we, there will be some judgment against us because we've opted to be here, but I can handle that but I'm not asking any of you to go through that. I just liked putting that key uh, in the door and just having a light on in the old White House. How many of you know we live in a sin-darkened world? Amen. Amen. Uh, I have tried to wrap my head around what is going on, and I have convinced myself they either really know something we don't know, and it's a lot bigger than we know, or they don't know any more than I know, and that's not a whole lot. <laughs> but what I do know, and what I'm convinced of, God is a great big God. Yes. And uh, here, there, home, wherever, we need His hand, and we need His protection, and we need His, His grace. And uh, I'm convinced that this too shall pass. And uh, we're going to get on the other side of it. And the victor's still going to live in us. And we're going to still praise his name. And we're going to live and not die and declare the word of the Lord. Can we give God a hand clap of praise? Amen. 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 And uh, I would really like to just encourage you today. I would really just like to... Uh, just speak some words of hope and, and let faith arise and let every enemy be scattered. I'll tell you what has really stared me in the face this week. And I shared a little bit with Brother Rob and, 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 and Brother Bruce. I was about ready to call him Sister Bruce. Excuse me. <laughs> uh, and uh, Brother Bruce. And I'll just have, well, have a little laugh here. Uh, but I have believed it scripturally. I have accepted it by faith that when the man of sin appears, when the Antichrist appears, how many of you know we live in a globally affected world? Yeah. Yes. And I've heard people say, well, how could the mark of the beast, how, how could the Antichrist affect? It'll just affect people there and not here. Folks, do you know what happened to you in the last few days? Within hours and two or three days, the American economy has been driven into the ground uh, uh, over coronavirus and uh, over disease. And then I, I go back to the influence of, of uh, uh, judgment in this world. I go back into the influence of, of the man of sin appearing one day who's going to have every answer. And I, I could just so plainly see in just these past few days how uh, it is really going to affect the whole world. If you've never understood that, hey, honey, let's look. And, and we can see it plainly how, how that's going to happen. It really brings a new perspective to that. And, and again, we've understood it scripturally. Uh, but we're just kind of living it out. And how many of you know this has the attention of the world? 
This yeah. has the tincture, uh, attention of, of the leaders of the world, governors of our country, and, and uh, they're taking this action and that action. But I want to tell you what I believe our action ought to be. Our action ought to be that we're aware of the day. We're aware of the lateness of the hour. Now, one governor went so far as to say that this circumstance has nothing to do with prophecy. Can you imagine a secular governor on worldwide news felt compelled to say this has nothing to do. Well, it let me know he knew something about prophecy. I wonder what he's doing about what he does know. And yet he wanted to tell the world, whoever, uh, and he's been on about every day. I think he's enjoying some camera time. But anyway, uh, for him to declare that, well, I'm the preacher, and I think it probably has everything to do with prophecy. And uh, our response as the body of Christ ought to be an, uh, an alertness about where we're at. Sister Dewana, what's going on in our world, Brother Allen? And say, Lord, what are you trying to say to us? What are you saying to the church? What are you saying? I'll tell you something else I thought about this week. It takes me back to Brother Cliff Allman's exhortation to us a couple, two or three weeks ago when he said, I want to be in church. I can't be in church. If you can be in church and you're not in church, how many of you know Cliff could get by with that when the pastor couldn't get by with that? <laughs> Cliff said, shame on you. And he wasn't being ugly. He was just sharing his heart. I miss church so bad, now I can't come. And if you can come and just don't come and, and neglect the house of God, he said, shame on you. Yes. Here, here's the thing about it. I'm glad we're in the house of God yes. today. Yes. And uh, I, I pray that this all gets cleared up and, and uh, the host of churches that we can all return to the house of God. But here's my thought. My thought further on that is this. If we shut it down for about two or three weeks, a month, maybe people, maybe everybody would want to return to church. <laughs> Hello? Uh, so I want to do a little exhortation. God's still on the throne. He's not caught off guard. He's still in charge. Brother Richard, everything is going to be intact until he fulfills the plan. This lets us see pestilence in the land, perilous times. This lets us see how quickly our life can be overturned. But I want to tell you what my word today is. Let's stay focused on God. Let's let faith rise in our heart. Let's trust him. Let's allow this to be a spiritual wake-up call to the fact that life is not certain. Life can even be deadly. There are things in the land. I see the worldwide impact. But you know what? I really believe this affords us an opportunity. There should be no people more at peace with the trust and arrest in God, regardless of what's going on in our world, coronavirus or not, friends, sin is rampant. Men and women are dying lost without God. Let's allow this to stir us up to the fact that we know the answer. How many of you know we sit here with the answer today? Christ in you, the hope of glory. And for any of those around who are nervous and are fearful, and friend, absolutely, they're fearful because they're buying 35 gallons of milk that's going to ruin in a week and a half. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we we got to choose our response, not just our reaction to it. And he really is the victor, and he's the greater one. And, and here's what I think we ought to do. I, I think that we need to understand it's a physical threat, but it's not a spiritual threat. 
I think we need to be humble before God. I don't think we should be holier than thou. But I think we should be ready to give every man an answer for the hope that lies in us. And our hope is beyond uh, coronavirus. Our hope is beyond whatever's going on in the world. And, and we must admit uh, there's something big happening uh, because it, it's affecting uh, all of our lives. We need to be sure that God is first. We need to be sure that we're seeking Him and that He's number one. We need to join Paul in saying the one thing I do. And Paul said that he was going to pursue God. So I feel compelled really to ask you, how are you doing? What are your thoughts concerning this? Uh, what, what is your stand here uh, relative to what's going on uh, in our world today? And I see it this way. We have two options. Our first option is one of trust. God, regardless of what happens, regardless of what's going on, having done all to stand, we simply stand. Now, the Bible said to be wise as serpents and harmless as as does. I'm not going to purposely go out and ch challenge coronavirus, but also I'm going to trust God. I've made the choice that I will trust God uh, to do something otherwise. I, I think we would fold to fear. I think we would maybe fold to panic. And let me tell you, if they run out of food in Pittsburgh, they just run out of food in Pittsburgh, but our God will still be on the throne, right? I still love, and I'm reminded of Wednesday night, I still love uh, what Sister Opal Cox used to stand in this very pulpit, this very pulpit, said, I'm not looking for a hole in the ground, I'm looking for a hole in the sky. And she said, in times of crisis for them, that Brother R.L. used to tell her, Opal said, I don't know how God's going to do it, but I know God will do it. And he said, this is what I know for sure. He said, if we get hungry and there is a crisis, he said, if the neighbor's chicken has to fly over our fence and commit suicide in our yard, God is going to take care of us. Can somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Amen. So, so here's what I think we've got to do in, in the midst of, of danger. I, I think that uh, we got to make a choice to believe God. I believe we need to be encouragers. I believe we need to be steady. I believe we need to be stable. I believe that we need to be faithful. Could you give me 2 Timothy 1.12? I don't believe God's ever going to let us down, Sister Candy. I believe God holds us in His hands. Hallelujah. I feel the witness of His Holy Spirit. I believe God holds our future in His hands. He still is in control of this thing. And uh, we just got to grasp God's love. We've got to grasp the victor like we sang about today. And if we'll do that, if God be for us, who can be against us? Absolutely. Huh? If God be for us, who can be against us? Now, I feel like moving here just a little bit. So, uh, here, let's, let's look at this verse of Scripture. For which cause I also suffer these things. You know, in this present world, Jesus said, in this world you shall have tribulation. Uh, Jesus said... Uh, if you'll suffer with me, you'll reign with me. Somehow or another, as the body of Christ, sometimes we think that life is, is a pathway and a bed of roses. It's not. We live in a fallen world. Friend, what we're feeling the effect of is a fallen world. A, a world and, and a world who rebels against God. And in a world where a governor would declare to this world who needs to hear the message of God and who needs to understand prophecy to declare this has nothing to do with prophecy. I want to tell you it has everything to do with prophecy. 
great wake up call for us. We are living in the last days. Honey, if they think this is tough, wait till the judgments of the revelation really fall. Wait till the tribulation period really unfolds in this world, right? Look at it. For which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I'm not ashamed. For I know whom I have believed in and I am persuaded. He is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Here's the thing about it. Some want to call on God like Santa Claus in the hour of crisis. Honey, I'm here having made a commitment. Amen. He is my Lord and Savior. He is my protector. He is my king and my guide. He is my paraclete and my helper day by day. He will never forsake me because Paul understood and the writer understood if you have a commitment to God, God will keep your commitment against that day. Are you committed to him today? Then just hold his hand. Just trust him. Amen. And he said committed unto him against that day. That's beyond Corona virus. Friend, it's at the end of the day, Brother Tom. God will keep us till he wraps this world up. So keep your eyes on the goal. Take the opportunity to share the peace that passeth all understanding. Amen. Don't do the otherwise, but believe, be an encourager. Now I want to make some other observations relative to prophecy. Do you know there's some 2,500 prophecies in the Bible and two-thirds of them are already fulfilled? And I want to tell you, if two-thirds of them have already been filled, the last one-third will be. And the last one-third are for, far more grave than coronavirus. Check your Bible out. But let me tell you this also. Only about 80% profess to be believers today. Only 15% of believers believe that the Bible is completely and fully the word of God. Did you hear what I say? Only 15% of believers, most of the church world don't even believe this is holy and fully, completely the word of God. That's not a very good stat. I want to tell you this. All 2,500 prophecies shall be fulfilled. And we're seeing days... Friend, I had never seen anything like this in my life. Now, my grandmother was a lady who was touched by polio. My whole life, my grandma Gaddy walked like this, for some of you that remember her, was polio virus. And thousands and thousands of people were affected by it, died, paralyzed. But I had never, I, I saw the effect of it, but I've never experienced it. So who knows what the coming days are, are going to have in them. And uh, uh, while I don't know, God knows, but I'll tell you what I believe. I believe the church world needs to understand the prophetic word. I believe the church world needs. You know, to disclaim prophecy would be a disclaim of the promise of the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. How many of you hope in the rapture of the church? How many of you hope in the second coming of the Lord? That fixed corona, wouldn't it? Well, we need the prophetic word. And uh, seven out of ten claim to be believers. And you know, it amazes me sometimes how even statistics don't seem to agree and take the, take the flip-flop. Um, I would submit to you that the, that governor may very well have been mocking uh, the prophetic word of God. But I want to tell you what side of the face God will have the last laugh. Amen. Uh, God's going to fulfill his word. So church, let's admit it. We are living in perilous times. We are living in times like birth pains. I'm the father of two children. I went in with my wife when she was delivering. It got so hard on me, I about passed out. Just about when I thought I'd pass out, it turned 
and it was better. My wife went from saying, I can't do this, I cannot do this. I said, there's no going back, you can do this. Right after she got out of delivery, she looked up at the delivery nurse and said, I'll be back in two years for my little girl. And I went like this. I thought, is this the same woman? But let me tell you something about birth pains. Ladies, you know better than the rest of us. They start light. They start farther apart. And they grow in intensity. And they get closer they get harder. They get more dramatic. They're felt in a different way. And all of it takes to where there's that push. I remember them saying, don't push. I remember them saying, now it's time to push. I will submit to you, Corona and perilous times. Uh, it, it is revelation of birth pains that these are all uh, 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 factors that point to the last days and the, the, the later hours. You know what I found a statistic even sadder, uh, and, and I think the saddest of all that I've shared with you, while only a third of Bible prophecy is left to be fulfilled, only 2% of the ministry even preach it. Did you hear what I just said? Only 2% of the men who would ever dare walk into a podium around the world and in the organized church, only 2% even preach prophecy. Uh, they say you can't preach it. The people don't want to hear it. They want to live full lives. It scares people. Well, friend, let me tell you, better forewarned than caught off guard and left behind after the rapture of God's yeah church in this sin darkened world are you with me today Amen. now I have brought with me today uh, a Bible story uh, could, could we first look at Romans 8 31 can, can we just look there real, real quickly Romans 8 31 what shall we then say to these things if God be for us, who can be against us? How many of you believe that's just a great place to stand? God, you're for us. God, you're with us. And we're just, we're not going to be foolish, but we just choose to stand on the word. Can we look at 1 John 5 and 4? Can we look at that? Praise God. 1 John 5 and 4. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Been one of my favorites since I was first saved as a uh, teen. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Saints, we're going to overcome this. And we're going to overcome it with our faith intact. We're going to overcome it with God still by our side. Amen. Look at it. Are you overcomers today? Amen. Yes, you are. Declared so by the word of God. Let's go to 2 Kings, the 7th chapter. And I want to just settle in there for a few minutes. And uh, see what the Lord has to say. I'm taking you back to a time in Samaria, at the gate of Samaria, where the enemy is threatening. Now I want you to remember the biblical story here. Uh, it was of four lepers. Now I want you to understand what has taken place to these four lives. They have already been kicked out of the city. It wasn't the coronavirus, it was leprosy. But with leprosy, do you know what the command and the law required you to do? I think maybe it was some 50 feet away. How many of you know that's further than the six foot rule? Huh? Now we can't shake hands. We've got to bump elbows. Right? Well, let me tell you what. 
These four lepers were kicked completely out of the city. And apparently they were not being fed. People were afraid to take these lepers their meals. The lepers were required at 50 feet away to cry out, unclean, unclean. With the virus we have today, we don't know whether we're clean or unclean. Amen. Now just stay with me. Let, let's just make some connection here. But it occurred to these leprous men who had already been, they have no access to the city. They have been involuntarily placed outside the city. They were counted unclean. No home, no food, just left to die. So while they were sitting there and reasoning, they thought, they're not bringing us food. They're afraid of our disease. We can never go home. So what is our option? They were trying to wrap their head around it and find an option. Now the enemies already threatened to take Samaria. The, the enemies have already threatened that we're going to destroy. Hey, much of the world this morning as we sit here in the house of God are, are being threatened by an unseen enemy. They could see their enemies. And the, the king had written uh, and sent out threatening words. But a prophecy, oh, there comes that word prophecy again. A prophecy had come forth that there's going to be food, that there's going to be blessings, and, and that God, the God of heaven, was going to make a way. But for all those that disbelieved and the king himself, God said, but you won't eat one bite of it. Now, this is what the lepers come to the conclusion. They said, you know what? We just will rise up and go fall in the hands of the Syrians because if they let us live, we live. If they don't, we're going to die out here anyway. Here's, here's where I'm at. I'm not going to go out and be ignorant and foolish, but honey, let me tell you, going to heaven really isn't a threat to me. God forbid... Uh, uh, the virus, but still, we 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 gotta we gotta put some things in perspective here. We gotta respond and not just re react out of fear and panic. It's so sober. This ought to be a moment of sobriety. This ought to be a moment of vigilance. Hey, we ought to seek God. We ought to draw nigh to Him. We ought to press into the heart of the Father. Now let's look at it. Uh, 2 Kings 7 and 1. Then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. And I want to just, just come bring some simple word of the Lord today. Friend, my words aren't going to encourage you, but his word ought to build faith in you. And, and he said, Hear the word of the Lord. We need the prophet. We need some prophecy. Amen. How many of you stand by the prophetic word? Thus saith the Lord, not Daryl, Thus saith the Lord, Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of flour be sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Then a Lord, on whose hand the king leaned, answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be. In other words, if God made windows in heaven, this might could happen, but I doubt this prophecy. It's not a prophecy of God. Friend, I've read the book of Malachi. It said, trust the Lord, prove the Lord, and see if he's not able to open the windows of heaven. How many of you believe there's windows in heaven today? How many of you believe God can provide everything you need when you need it the most? How many of you know we need him? We need him in our hour of crisis. The leprous men were in crisis. The enemy was, is this not an enemy to the world today? Are they not saying we're in a crisis today? I still haven't figured out how they let the economy be driven to this place. But I'm not the smartest brick around. 
but I've sure been trying to figure some of this out. You know what? Again, God has it in control. Now look at it. I'm hurrying. Now, behold, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be? And he said, behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes and not eat thereof. He said, oh, God's big enough. And there is a window this is going to come through. And he said, you're going to see it. But because you didn't believe me, you'll not have one bite of it. How many of you know that's a pretty powerful word there? You know, there is an element in the church world and especially in the world. If the church ever talks about the judgment of God, then, then uh, they say we make God vicious or, or we make him an unjust God. How many of you know there's the love of God and the severity of God? How many of you know you can fall on God and be broken? If you don't fall on God and be broken, he'll fall on you and you'll be broken. How many of you know God would rather mercy and grace always above judgment and destruction? Amen. 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 Let's look and see what the lepers say. And there were four leprous men at the entering of the gate. They were right there, right at the access, right at the very gate. I walked right in the grocery store the other day to get milk and there was none to be had. Hello. Because somebody just in front of me bought 35 gallons. Yeah. They're going to run out of their 35 gallons. I better roll along, haven't I? Now look at it. Look what they're going to come to a conclusion. You've got to come to a conclusion. But what are we going to do? This is what they said. And they said one to another, Why sit we here until... We die. Honey, I don't plan to sit around and die by the coronavirus. How about you? Now, I'm, I don't downplay it. Apparently somewhere there is people dying of this disease. Amen. Uh, how many of you know it's real to them if you're the one dying? And, uh, but still, we have to come and make some conclusions. They say... If we say we will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city. And we shall die there. And if we sit still here, we die also. Now therefore come and let us fall under the host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall but die. Can I submit something to you? We're not left to the hands of the world. Amen. We're not just left to the hands of the crisis hour. In the midst of our crisis, we can choose to look to God, focus on God, trust Him. But honey, whether we live or whether we die, we live as unto the Lord and we die as unto the Lord, right? Did you ever read that in your Bible? That's what the scripture said. So out of this, the lepers are going to come up with a plan. Let's follow it right on through. Now, therefore, come and let us fall into the host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live. If they kill us, we shall but die. And they rose up in the twilight to go into the camp of the Syrians. And when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp of Syria, behold, there was a man there. There was no man there. Thank you, sir. Boy, somebody's listening. <laughs> For the Lord had made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots. You, you know, saints, Haman had made a plan to kill all of the Jews. Queen Esther was in the kingdom. Haman said, I'm going to destroy them. I'm going to kill them. Mordecai 
the cousin of the queen said, Esther, who knows for a time such as this? I say lighthouse. I say community of the body of Christ. Who knows but for an hour and for a time such as this that we can rise up and be the witness to the world that God is in charge, God is in control, and whatever we face and in our darkest hour, we need to know God, we need to love Him and serve Him. If we live, we live, and if we die, we die as unto the Lord. Are you with me this morning? And man, we've got a word. We've got a message of hope. We're not going to just sit around and die. We're going to believe our God. If we believe our God, even in this hour, we can be a great light in the time of darkness. So what had happened, the lepers made their choice. We're going to go into the camp. Friend, they, they really exercised an amount of faith here. I think this is a, an hour to exercise just some faith. Amen. God's keeping power. God's keeping him sheltered under the shadow of his wing. Amen. His banner is over me. Right? We run into his refuge and he keeps us. Well, what the Lord did for these unclean men, he made it sound like the entire host of Samaria was coming against the Syrians. He, he put fright in the enemy of his, of, of his own shadow. Man. And they heard things that were not as if they were. How many of you know God can, think, can take things that are not and make them a reality? So here we are. The Syrians heard the noise of chariots and the noise of horses and the noise of a great host. How many of you know that was God? Amen. They said one to another, Lo, the king of Israel hath hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come upon us. Wherefore they arose and fled in the twilight. They left their tents. Friend, there's going to be an empty house ready just for the men who had no house. There's going to be cars left behind. They're going to have a horse where they had no horse. How many of you know in the midst of our crisis, God can still provide a house and a car? Amen. Hello? Don't you just love the word? Yes. And their asses and even the camp as it was and fled for their life. Now this enemy that did all of the threatening now is just like Haman when he couldn't hang Mordecai on his gallow, when he couldn't carry his threat out and kill the entire populace of the Jews. Haman is going to be hung on his own gallow. God took that very fear factor, turned it back to the enemy's head, protected whom he wanted to protect, exalted whom he wanted to. Saints, I think this is a great hour to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God that he might exalt us in due season, right? Hey, this will pass. Look what else was left. And carried thence silver and gold and raiment and wit and hid it. And came again and entered into another tent. So, so let's see what they were doing. They went in and they got as much as they could pick up and carry. And they went out and hid it. They came back into another tent. Got all the goodies there. Picked it up. Packed it out. And hid it. Right? And, and man, they have come into their trove of treasure and what looked like certain death became the bounty blessings of a God who made a way where there seemed to be no way. Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Hey, God, when all looked threatening, when all looked like there is no hope, there is hope in the midst of the storm. That's what I want to encourage you with. I want to encourage you with some hope and some faith. Again, be wise as serpents, harmless as doves. Let's keep peace foremost. If somebody's really in fear and, and up against it and, and highly nervous, 
Witness to them. Share the gospel. Hey, and if it's your brother and your sister in Christ, encourage them. Amen? Now, they're going to come up with another plan. Note, verse number 9. Then they said one to another, We do not well. This day is a day of good tidings, and we hold our peace. You know what they were saying? They said in the midst of threat, in the midst of lack, in the midst of dire circumstances, if we have come into a blessing and we have heaped upon ourselves all of this treasure and we don't go back to those who remain under threat, the very king himself, they're going to find out that we're blessed. Hey, friend, I think it's time for the world to find out the house of God is blessed. I think it's time the world finds out we have a God that is with us, not just on the mountaintop. He's the God of the mountains and the God of the valleys. Amen? Don't shout me down now. So they are going to come up with the decision. If we tarry till the midnight and some mischief come upon us, now therefore come that we may go and tell the king's household. My God, can I encourage someone? God's going to turn this thing around. God's going to turn this thing around. And somebody's going to come back and say the pandemic is past. It's good. The victory's been won. There is hope. There is an answer. And these four leprous men who had been kicked out of their home, who had lost all access to that that would sustain their life, comes into the bounty and the blessings of the Lord. They could either choose to heap it to themselves. Hey, lighthouse, we are the light of the world. We are the city built on the hill. How is it that we can have the blessings of God and not go snatch somebody as a firebrand out of the jaws of hell? Hey, this is an hour for us to shine brighter. This is an hour to go back and say, Hey, God's made a way. God is still on the throne. God has an answer. Amen? So they came to the king's house. They called unto the porter of the city and they told them, saying, We came to the camp of the Syrians. Behold, there was no man there. Hey, saints, Brother Mike Burks, there's going to be a day the threat's going to be passed. I'm just shouting on that. I see that in this scripture. I see what looked like no way. There is a way. They said, hey, man, there was not one voice of a man there. Correctly said, no man was there. God turned it around. Thank you, Father. I know you're going to turn it around said the horses was tied, the ass was tied, the tents, the housing was there. And he called the porter of the house and told it to the king's house within. Now notice this, how that the king is still going to be suspicious. You know, when prophecy comes forth today, did you know the epistle of Peter said that there would be those who would mock and reject prophecy. Huh? And here, the lepers come back with hope and going to tell the king all is good and the king thinks it's a setup for entrapment. Let's go ahead and read it. The king rose up in the night, said unto his servants, I will now show you what the Syrians have done to us. This is what he said. They know we be hungry. People are afraid of, in this situation, they're going to go without. They're going to be hungry. Therefore, they're gone out of the camp to hide themselves in the field, saying, when they come out of the city, we shall catch them alive and get into the city. And one of his servants answered and said, let some take, I pray thee, five of the horses that remain, which are left in the city, behold, are 
as all the multitude, uh, multitude of Israel that are left in it, behold, I say, they are even all the multitude of the Israelites that are consumed, and let us send and see. They took therefore two chariot horses. The king sent after the host of the Syrians, saying, Go see. The king said, We're going to have to go check this thing out. Saints, I think it'd just be a good time in this wake up call. For us to just check out, is God God and is God bigger? They went after them under the Jordan. And lo, all the way was full of garments. You know what the king's witnesses witnessed? Sister Sharon had the enemy in his fear when God turned that thing around. They threw their garments aside. Friend, they lost all interest in, listen to me, they lost all interest in housing, in clothing, in silver, and in treasury. Yep. Now you think about that. What are people interested in right now? I'm going to have to get me my stuff, and I'm going to have to carry it home and protect myself. Mm -hmm. But when fear came in, those who had it all cast it aside and ran for their lives. Well, there's some meditation. Hey, we're not in that kind of fear. We've got God. If God be for us, who can be against us? Right? So the king began to say, see that there was truth from these messengers. And the messengers returned and told the king. And the people went out. And you know what they did? They took the spoils because God turned it around. Be encouraged, saints. I don't know when the news is going to change worldly, but I can tell you this news has never changed. Amen. 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 God's going to fulfill it, and God will fulfill it for you. Amen. So the people went out, spoiled the tents of the Syrians, so a measure of fine flour was sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel. How did that come to pass? It was a prophecy. And God said, the very thing that would happen has now happened. Saints, two-thirds of the prophetic word of God has been fulfilled. We're living in days we're going to watch God fulfill the last third. And in fulfilling the last third, there's going to be judgment come to this world that will blow Corona out of the water. Are you with me today? We must work while it's day for the night cometh when no man can work. Brother Mike called me about that verse of scripture. And years ago, I just happened to be in a situation where God had burdened me with that word in such a real way to teach me that scripture. I have had the privilege to be with uncles and my dad and, and, and other uh, people where we were working in a hedgerow or we were out in the field. And, and the, the older guys told some of us younger ones, said it's getting dark. Let's get the tools all picked up. Because when it gets dark, we won't be able to find them. We got a little bit of light left. Let's get them all gathered so we don't lose them. Anybody is a real witness in the house. And uh, so I was studying and praying about that scripture. This has been many, many years ago. And I later preached on what revelation I saw in that. And, and simply what God told me at that time. And I shared with Brother Mike this week. I said, Mike... There is a darkness coming to this world spiritually that's going to be so dark it's going to be hard for people to even receive and see it at all. Do you get it? He said work while it's day. Work while you can because there's going to be such a spiritual darkness. There's going to be such a lie come upon the minds of the people even when we make the effort. And honey, that'll be in that time just before Jesus raptured the church of God. I believe that with all of my heart. We're here because he's not willing that any should perish. We're here, but this is another wake up call for the church. Work while it's day, for the night cometh. Where it gets so dark, we can no longer work because minds 
have become completely shut down. The governor said this has nothing to do with prophecy. He must know prophecies out there, but I wonder if he's fulfilling the word in the epistle of Peter when it says, all things continue as it was since our fathers. But you know what? We still live under the promise Jesus will return. But until then, we work and we share. And this very king, you know what happened to him? He got to hear the word of the Lord fulfilled, but I'll close in these next three verses. And the king appointed the Lord on whose hand he leaned. Remember reading that in the earlier part of the scripture? To have charge of the gate. And the people trod upon him in the gate. It's like going to Walmart to get a little milk for a couple of days. The crowd's going to run over you because there's no six-foot rule. Hello? And you're going to get in there and the meat's all wiped out. There's no toilet paper. Hello? <laughs> Right? You love us suffer being trampled because we're all in a panic. And that's what they did here. Man, and you know what they did? They ran over the king and he died because God said you'll see it, but you'll not eat of it because you didn't believe me. I'm closing. I think, saints, as for me and my house, we ought to just believe God. Yeah. Live or die, we live unto the Lord and we die unto the Lord. But somehow or another, I believe God's going to take us through to the other side. And it came to pass as the man of God had spoken to the king, saying, Two measures of barley for a shickle, measure of fine flour for a shickle, shall be tomorrow and about this time at the gate of Samaria. And the Lord answered the man of God and said, Now behold, if the Lord should make windows in heaven, might such a thing be? And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it, where of thine eyes but thou shalt not eat thereof. And so it fell out unto him, for the people trod upon him in the gate, and he died. What killed him? What killed him? His unbelief. Virus didn't kill him. Lap didn't kill him. It was all there. What killed him was his unbelief. He didn't make too much of a sure word of prophecy either. Honey, God said it. I believe it. And it makes it so. It doesn't make it so that I believe it. Brother, it makes it so because he said it. That's right, right. He said it. Sister Virginia makes it so because God said it. So if he said it, let's believe it. And let's stand on it. So, this may be a physical threat. Help me, Brother Rob. Well, Brother Rob's on that. Sister Marcia, could you come and help me just a moment? He, he's working that. Just something you know, sis. Sorry to abuse you on your day off. <laughs> So can I encourage you? Grasp the trust and the love of God. Amen. Amen. Stand on His sure promise. And at the end of the day, friend, when the morning breaks, we're going to come through. Let's reflect just a moment. What did we start this year with? 2020 vision. How many of you expected our vision would see coronavirus in 2020? I saw a little humor coming through Asbury the other day. Being there to minister with my wife. I was so upset when they wouldn't let me stay with her. Been trying to help take care of her for 43 years now doctor said I could stay. They didn't even know what the rules was. I was told this, I was told that, told this, told that. 
by the second or third day of it, I guess they got it figured out. And they no longer had to t tell us to take our badge off and give it to them. But when I walked out yesterday, I said, now the monkeys, you don't even have to tell the monkeys what to do. We just hand it over. <laughs> in about three days. If I go in there today, I just take it in hand. They wouldn't even have to tell me what. Hello. I wish we was that true to the word of God. Drove through Asbury and they were so proud of their gas price. You know how you've ever said, man, I saw that and I had to blink because I couldn't believe I saw it. They have gas for $1.49 in Asbury and they have the four blinking. <laughs> it, I just, I was almost on the floor in my car. It was just a hoot to me. I'm like, I blink, I can't blink. I said, I told Sister Diane, we had a little chuckle together. I said, they took the blink out of it. They're blinking because they're so proud of $1.49. I said, well, that's all right if it gets to be 89 cents, but if none of us have jobs, if none of, hey, they're going to be real proud. We got gas for 50 cents, but hey, hey, we took all your money. You know what I still say in closing? At the end of a dollar forty-nine gas, at the end of seventy-five cent gas, at the end of us up against the wall, who is greater? Stand with me.